What's going on everybody? My name's Chris. Welcome to my channel. This is part 10 of my acoustic guitar build. It's the first guitar I've ever built and I'm making it from scratch. You see last time we made the neck. Got it together just in rough form. You can see what I was just doing. I was kind of thinning out the, the back part of this headstock or the bottom part around up to where the nut comes in. So I just rigged up my oscillating spindle sander with a little fence on it because I don't have like a drum sander or anything like that. So that's going to be making the volute or the volute. So it's a little bit thicker right here. So I'll be shaping that a little bit. But what you can see here is it, it reveals the joint where that scarf joint came in on the back. And I just decided I don't like the way it looks. It's got like some discoloration here on this side. So I just got on the LMI and ordered some Indian rosewood veneer. So in the video, Robbie uses like a burl, like a darker burl veneer. Can't find any of that without spending more money. So for about 12 bucks, I got some Indian rosewood veneer coming from LMI, which I'll Put on the back of this just to cover that joint up plus i guess it'll help kind of strengthen that joint and keep it together so until that comes in i guess i can work on the heel all right so there's the uh holes for the bolt on section these little tubes go in there of course the bolts will come in from the bottom here what I did what I had to do is kind of pre-calculate my neck angle so I'll know about where to put those the way I pre-calculated the angle was I made this shim and I it was hard but I found center of the guitar and then I measured from the 14th fret down to where my bridge is going to be and I put that shim there and then I took this straight edge just, I just got this I just laid that there and use this to kind of get the same angle and I'll put that on here and that's how I got that angle. So I don't know what exactly that angle is, but this is the process that Robbie goes into more detail on in the course. So if you want to learn how to do this, you can of course purchase this course. Of course you can purchase the course, of course. So now I'm bringing it in a little bit closer. So now what I want to do is cut out this shape here. I've seen a lot of pictures of heels on, on Instagram and I like the just straight square ones instead of doing like a traditional like pyramid style. So what I have is a cut off of the head plate, this ebony, and I think I'm gonna use this to make a heel cap. I don't know if I'll go straight, but there may be like a curve to it a little bit. And then I've been looking at a lot of pictures. What I've seen is that this will actually kind of head back down this way and then, cur then curve up. So I'm gonna cut about right here this i mean this is just guesstimation so i'm gonna try that so i need to cut this out all right so the uh, veneer i ordered for the back strap came in so let me show you what i've done i've taken this piece that i cut off and i've shaped the bottom of it so that it lines up and I can use it as a clamping call for that curve on the back. So here's the veneer, it's just a piece of Indian rosewood. I'm not sure if it's the right thickness or what, but it's what I'm gonna use. So it's just gotta bend just barely right there. I'm going to try to bend it a little bit. So I've got the bending iron set up and I'm gonna go ahead and take care of that now. I don't wanna put such a thin piece of wood directly in this hot bending iron. Of course, the dog's going crazy. So I'm gonna wet down this napkin. I'm gonna lay it on top, right there. Then, I'll bend this a little bit. Whew, steam's hot. Steam is very hot. Let me see if this will fit. Take that off for right now. Actually, I didn't even bend it anymore. It looks like it'll bend enough to close up. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing glued on. All right, I'm ready to go. I think, I think. <laughs> I hope it'll work out. All right, it's been quite a few hours since I did this. Uh, I did this this morning and now it's uh, after supper, so it should be dry. Let's get a, get a look at it. All right, 
Somehow there's like some glue squeeze out. It's almost like glue came up through the veneer. Hmm. Maybe this is not the right size for a back strap. Well, can't do nothing about it now. It's so thin, it's got little holes in it or something. Glue came up through it. Alright, so what I've done is I've taken my headstock template and I shaved the bottom of it to match the volute and um, I've double stick taped it where I want it so or where it's gonna go um, so what I've got to do is <laughs> I've got to go to the bandsaw and cut as close as I can to this template I don't think I'm gonna use a router to trim right up against it I may just use the spindle sander and get up to my lines I'll, I'll draw a line around this before I take this off before I take this off I'm gonna mark where these holes go and then drill those out on the drill press so some scary stuff coming up hope I don't mess up Alright, that went smoothly. There's no blowout on the other side, so I'll finish this up and catch up with you when I get done. Looks pretty good. So now, with what's left of the line that I drew on the back, I don't know, maybe I should have used the router. I'm going to do some shaping on the spindle sander. I'm really going to plan on using a router next time because it was hard to get down to the lines and once I got down to the lines I couldn't see the line anymore I would just kind of look at it by eye and you know the, the grain lines make will make it seem off on one side compared to the other so I just kept nibbling away at it a little bit by little bit also what I've done is I've marked center of the neck so it tapers all the way back down to here so I'm going to take this to the bandsaw and cut that out Otherwise, the back strap looks pretty good. I mean, I've got some spots here where the glue looks like it came through a little bit, but it feels like a hump right there. I can probably sand that out a little bit. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead to the bandsaw and, and taper the neck. It went pretty smoothly, but it kind of scared me when it dropped off right there. I wasn't realizing that I was about to do that. I'll go ahead and do the other side and I'll catch up with you. Pretty cool. Starting to look more like a neck. <laughs> that sock looks pretty cool, I think. So that part's out of the way, but next, I gotta cut the neck joint using that jig. I, I bought LMI's uh, neck joint jig, Robert O'Brien's, I guess, neck joint jig. So I gotta cut a mortise into the top of the body and I gotta cut a tenon on the bottom of this. And uh, it's gonna be scary. But it's the next part, so I guess I gotta do it. So I've got this blue piece here which has a center line engraved on it, lined up with the center line on the body. But here's where the problem comes in that I talked about two videos back, uh, where I mentioned that there may be a problem with the neck uh, because the top of the guitar is like this and not straight. Well, at the top of the guitar on this side, it's straight. But then I guess the way I bent the sides, it bows up a little bit on this side. So it's shaped kind of like this. <laughs> All right. Let it flow. But anyway, in order to, if I just take the guitar body and flush it against the top, this center line would shoot this way. So the... The body has to be centered so that the neck can be centered. If I look at the top here, I, it's flush on this side, but if I look at the on this side, there's a gap. So that means I'm gonna have to shave a lot of material off the bottom of the neck on this side once I, once I have the neck set on there. I'm just thinking about all this in my head, so wish me luck. All right, so I've got the jig turned around and I'm ready to cut. Can you, am I even in frame? All right, I've got the jig turned around and I'm ready to cut the tenon in the neck. I'm using the jig as intended. I have the body set up here. I'm checking at where the bridge would be. I've got this where it's supposed to be, but things are not as I expected on the actual neck placement here. I'm gonna show you what I had to do. All right, so here's the bottom of the neck. You can see I have it set up, hooked in there. 
And what should happen is after I get this set up and adjust this how it needs to be, this should be flush. This piece should be flush to the top of the neck. And it was not so with my neck. I had a huge gap back here and it was touching up here. So what Robbie said to do, he made a comment about having to adjust it drastically. And he did mention you'd have a gap here or a gap in the back. Whatever happened is just make sure that the neck is flush. So what I've had to do is I've had to shim the neck. See, I got a shim in here. I got a couple more behind here uh, to force the top of the neck away from the jig so that it will sit flush. So I don't know what's gonna happen. I did it like he said to do it. I don't know how my neck got off that much. I'm obviously jack something up with the the body construction or something maybe, I don't know. I mean, we already know I messed up the top because it's not straight across. So I don't know what's gonna happen, but I've gotta cut this tenon. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it. Get rule number one. Do not remove that router with it spinning. All right, I stopped an eighth of an inch from the end. Um, that's so that I can take it out and test it and just make sure that verify the angle's good. Uh, but <laughs> I guess because I've left my neck so wide, well, you'll see it's like got a <laughs> flash of wood all around the edge of it. Let me get this out of here. <laughs> I put some tape on it, hoping to prevent any kind of tear out, because uh, Robbie had tear out on, a little bit of tear out on his. Obviously, I'm going to have to uh, get that off of there somehow. I know I've seen a lot of guitar builders who have the very wide um, heel, which I'm trying to go for. So I, I'm guessing there's somehow they get that off of there. I'll have to figure that out, but I'm gonna have to do that now because I gotta put this in the guitar and test it. Oh my gosh. Let me try to figure that out. Yeah, this may be a stupid idea, but it's the first, <laughs> yeah, for some reason it's the first thing that popped in my head. I've got a flush cut saw and I'm going very slowly. I'm not, I'm not gonna do this ever again probably, but slow going but but this is what I'm doing for now anyway if you've done this before just leave me a comment so that next time I'll have a better idea of what to do I sure appreciate it thanks yeah just coming back to you found a, a little improvement what I did was I took my dovetail saw and cut off this piece that I had already cut off. And when I did it, I left my saw there so that once I cut through, I wouldn't cut into the neck. But that gives me more uh, room back here to hold on to it. And I've already made the, I've made the turn already. Might go a little bit faster now. But anyway, that's all I wanted to say. I'm gonna keep going. The only bad thing is I did cut down a little bit right here. It's sloped, but it's not down to my 14 uh, fret line, which is fine. It'll at least be able to let me get on the, uh, hmm. It might not let me. Hmm. I think what I need to do is modify that, that template so that I, my router comes all the way out. I may need to just go ahead and do that. All right, just an update. I went ahead and filed down the little high spot here so I could at least try to fit it on and register right up against the tenon onto the neck and try to get my angle test. But the, the tenon doesn't even start to go in. It's, the tenon's too thick, probably by like a sixteenth of an inch, which I don't understand if that why the templates don't match better than that. So I'm gonna have to file both sides of the tenon by the same amount so that it can be centered. And it's too late to have to worry about that right now. I was hoping to get this done before the end of the day, but it ain't gonna happen. So I just need to chill out and take a night to think about it. I think what I'm gonna do is tomorrow, first thing I'm gonna do is modify that template so that I don't have to try to cut that away. I can just do it all with the router. And then the only thing I have to worry about at that point is just sizing this tenon to fit perfectly in there. So that's what I'm gonna do. So it's good night for now. I'll see you on a new day. All right, so it's the next day. I've had some time to rest and decide that yes, I will modify the template. But before I make the final cut, I really do need to check and make sure my neck angle's right. What I've got is a sanding beam here. I bought this so that I could use it to level the, the fretboard, but I've got a piece of sandpaper taped to it, and I'm taking the same amount of strokes on each side of the tenon. And I've got some blue tape on the bottom so that I don't sand down. I'm getting close. I'm almost there, just not quite. I'm gonna keep on doing that until it fits. And now I'll get back with you. All right. So it's actually together. I got it to go. It was very, very tight still. I probably need to sand just a little bit more off of the base 
of the tendon. But I gotta say, as jacked up as everything is with the neck joint jig and how this is going so far, it's uh, it looks pretty cool to see it like this. You ought to see the gaps though. All right, so a couple of things. Let me come in a little bit closer with our extra dry. All right, so you'll see here the tenon is kind of long, so I'll have to trim a little bit off the back of the tenon. And of course, I still gotta go down farther. And also, you can see the gap situation I'm gonna have. See, like I said, the, the neck comes this way and then it loop, then it hoops up right here. You see how it hoops up a little bit? So that's the part that's touching first. So I knew I was gonna have a gap over here. Once I trim the final bit off of the tenon on the angle jig, um, I'm going to have to sand a good bit off of this side to make it sit flush down. I know I, I did take that flush cut saw and really jack things up, especially on this side. Look at it. <laughs> I don't even know, man. I don't know if that's redeemable. I'm going to take the back of the tenon off to make that sit flush, and then I can check the angle. And then I can take the last pass with the router, and then we'll see where we're at. All right, I've, I've uncovered a serious mistake, <laughs> like major, major mistake that I made. First of all, this is when I started thinking, what in the world did I do wrong? All right, well, I know this isn't long enough really, but first of all, I can't even, if I lay it flat on the neck, there's that gap here. I mean, it just, it even, it just runs into the sound hole, which means I'm off by at least six, seven millimeters. So then I thought, well, it's, that, it's the neck, <laughs> it's the neck joint. This has got to bend back. A good bit. So I started thinking, what in the world did I do wrong? Maybe I misunderstood the angle thing that Robbie said for setting it up in the angle jig. And I think that's that's where my problem is. So let me bring you over here. All right, when I put this neck jig in here, oh sorry, when I put the neck in here, remember how I said that I needed to angle the neck this way to make this flush? I don't think that's what Robbie meant. I thought he meant make angle this so that this is flush. I think what he meant was actually cut an angle into the back of this so that it sat flush. Because this needs to be flush up against the back. Otherwise, I'm not really putting an angle. I'm not putting the angle in the neck. It's got a reference off of this and transfer up to the, the body. So it's got to be flat up against that. And I totally wasn't. You saw the shims I had behind it, which means I'm just completely jacked up. So when I did the pre-calculation of the neck angle with the little shim and the straight edge, and then I used this to uh, figure out kind of what that was so that I would know where to put, to, to know where to put the holes for the bolt hardware. That angle really needed to be transferred to the top of the heel and cut. I wish I would have known that at the time, that I just needed to transfer that angle up here and cut that angle into the bottom of the heel. This angle, I mean, I redid it and it, it lines up with the holes, but obviously there's a gap. I mean, there would be, there's, it's not sitting flush. It touches back here and there's a gap down here. So that's the angle I need. So only thing I could do now that I'm thinking about it is it's other than just quitting the project, which I feel that's what I feel like right now, just quitting. Put all this work into it. I mean, the worst case is I may have to remake the neck. And I've already, I mean, I took two days off of work today and yesterday so that I could have time to work on this crucial part. I did, this it feels like this is a complete waste two days to to work on this and to just screw it up I, i've already mentioned how i only ha, I only have a I only have a certain amount of time to work on this taking two days off thinking i'd get this portion done so anyway that's the end of this video I'm, i don't mean to leave a cliffhanger but uh, i need some time to process and think what i'm going to do and try to work this out off camera let me tell you what i'm thinking before i just cut it off i only have about eighth inch more less than eighth of an inch more of travel on that um, router before it bottoms out and cuts the, the final pass. All I know to do is to transfer this line to the top of the tenon, cut the top, shave the top of the tenon off to that angle, place it back again in here, make a pass with the with the router before I adjust it all the way down and see what kind of correction that gets because it will shave some off the back here just because I'll, I'll be tilting it up this way. Whatever the case may be, I'm going to try to figure it out and then see what kind of adjustment I can get. I'm concerned about where the 14th fret is going to hit on the body. I mean, I know it's got to hit right here. Whether that gets moved or not, I don't know what to do if that happens. But I'm going to try to figure that out. Just feeling down right now. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. In addition to that, this LED light that I bought two months ago stopped working somehow. I noticed it looked darker in here. It was working yesterday. So that was a waste. And then as it would happen, my extra light that I use, I noticed, wait, why isn't it turning on? I was just using it earlier and it's not working. So I've had two LED lights go out in the same day randomly and then this massive screw up. So it's just not a good day. Join me next time. <laughs> I'm hoping there's going to be a next time. I'm really, I'm really going to try to not have to remake the neck. If I have to remake the neck, I don't know what I'll do. I'm, I'll probably feel like just scrapping the whole thing and starting over on a new guitar. But that's a big time and money investment. Anyway, we'll see. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you. Uh, if you got any comments about what I could do, 
if you've run, run into this before, leave, leave me a comment, I guess. I don't know. Thank you. And I'll see you next time.